Welcome to Breakout Investors. Today we are speaking with the management of Royal Energy Inc, ticker R-O-Y-L, specifically the company's CEO, Johnny Jordan, and co-founder, Don Hosmer. Joining me on today's call is Breakout Investor, Ashley Day. This call is being recorded on June 1st, 2022, and will be distributed via the Breakout Investor channel on YouTube and via our podcasting network. Look for Breakout Investor content wherever you subscribe to podcasts. We are on Apple, Spotify, Audible, and most other platforms. Supporting materials for today's discussion will be posted on the Breakout Investors Collaboration app, available on the app stores and at app.breakoutinvestors.com. The application and much of the research content is free. After registering or logging in, use the search bar at the top right of any page, type in the ticker, and the results will give you the link to the research post for today's presentation and to other discussion and research relating to today's company. Those of you already on the Breakout Investors platform can share your questions for the company using the Discuss tab in Ashley's Breakout Room. So with that, we'll turn it over to Johnny to give a quick overview of the company. Johnny? Yes, uh, yeah, my name's Johnny Jordan, and uh, the company Royal Energy uh, is a combination of two companies. Uh, my old company, Matrix Oil uh, and Royal, merged back in 2018. And uh, the reason we did that, uh, Royal had, you know, the ability to raise money to drill, drill for wealth. Uh, they, they, uh, they were lacking in prospects where we had as a company, a lot of prospects, a lot of fields that needed uh, to infill development, and we didn't have the capital to do that. So we felt like that was an excellent uh, combination of, you know, companies. And uh, so we, we think, completed that merger back in March in 2018. And since that time, we started developing several different fields, uh, a couple of fields in California, gas field up in Northern California, uh, Sands Nina field in LA basin. And then uh, we later on acquired a field in Texas called North Jameson, which was a field that uh, Matrix had owned in the past and had sold 90% uh, of it. And we bought the 90% back from General Electric back, uh, it would have been in probably 2021 or early 2020, somewhere in there, I can't remember the exact date. So we've been developing that field as well. Um, the way we raise our money for our drilling is through a direct working interest program. And uh, Don's gonna tell you about that here in a little bit, but uh, the company itself had, uh, um, dug a pretty deep hole when we uh, did the merger, then the price collapse of 2020. Uh, we are doing much better now, of course, with the price of oil, we're working hard to get our volumes up. The way we're getting our volumes up is drill these prospects that we had, and uh, we've drilled several, and we're in different phases of development. Um, you may have heard of uh, ducks, you know, uh, in Permian Basin and other places, drilled uncompleted wells. Well, our wells, we have several where we've drilled. We have done the first phase of the completion, but uh, we need to finish the, the the final phase, which would be fracture stimulating the, the, res the reserves or the reservoirs. And uh, we're in the process of doing that now on several of the wells we drilled in our North Jameson field. But we've had uh, pretty good successes, uh, but because of uh, the... Uh, kind of the hole we dug with the super low oil prices, you know, you still got to pay your people, still got to pay for operating the fields, even though you were losing money when you were doing both. Uh, we uh, uh, we ended up taking less interest in the wells that we drilled and sold, not sold, but the investors bought more you know, of that interest, which was buying from us. So that's that helped us, uh, you know, maintain a level of cash flow that, uh, enabled us to stay in business at the time, but we have um, uh, we have no debt. You know, we didn't have to accumulate any debt to get through that hard times, which is why we were able to get through those hard times. Now we're into the really, really, really good times. And uh, now we're finishing up those you know, wells that uh, we talked about. And uh, we have several other really great prospects that we're in the process of drilling. And when I call them prospects, they're not what you would say typical, you know, exploratory type prospects. They're development type wells, in infill development, uh, maybe one step out location. Uh, we're just entering into uh, a new field in 
Andrews Nectar County, Texas, which is right in the heart of the Permian Basin. Uh, we're going to participate at a small level uh, for some horizontal shell drilling. Uh, the first well that was drilled in that uh, play is peak rate was 830 barrels a day, and uh, the reserves are as good as any well that's been drilled in that place so far. Uh, because of our relationships with the operator, we're able to get into that on the on ground floor type pricing. We're not being promoted at all, so we're able to bring uh, participates, participation into that project for our direct working interest investors. And that's in the current book. And, and uh, the book that I sent you, it doesn't have it in there yet, but we're in the process of revising it. So instead of being in, you know, four wells and two fields, we're going to have four wells and three fields. So it spreads the, the risk out. And Don's going to talk about that here in a minute. But I'll, uh, Don, you got anything to add to uh, regarding Royal? No, that was a good overview. But uh, like Johnny said, we uh, bring individual high net worth investors in to help us on the drilling capital costs. If we took 100% of every well, then we wouldn't be in as many wells as we're in or as many different fields as we're in. And so uh, we share those with other industry members and individuals. Royal puts up uh, up to half the capital drilling costs, and then we bring in the uh, other part of the capital through individual and uh, high net worth investors. But they're diversified. As Johnny said, we have three different oil fields, uh, very low risk type developmental drilling. In fact, in uh, one of the wells in the current project, we're just doing a re-entry into a well that was drilled back in 1981 by Sun Oil. And they produced the lower formations, but never came up full to produce the primary uh, formation called the upper strong. And so we've got 45 feet of oil pay behind pipe that we're just going to do a low cost, low risk re-entry and uh, probably encounter about 100,000 barrels of oil in it. So we've got great opportunities. Uh, as Johnny said, uh, the merger uh, worked out really well because Royal uh, raises capital. And then uh, the Matrix team uh, just had good quality assets. In fact, the best oil fields I've been involved in in my 35 years in the business. And so they're, uh, we've hit 100%. We haven't hit any dry holes so far. And uh, with today's oil prices, the uh, margins are tremendous. <clears throat> in fact, we locked in our drilling costs when uh, oil was around $90 a barrel. And so the current book, uh, we're over $100 a barrel. And uh, so the margins are tremendous. Cash flows are going to be very good on these. So open the floor to any questions or anything else you'd like to just elaborate on? Yeah, great. Uh, thanks very much for the uh, overview. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I've been following the company since the Matrix merger, and uh, we met in Santa Barbara a few weeks ago, and thanks very much for your time then. And uh, maybe wanted to ask, do you, you guys have a mix of uh, oil and gas? Is there... Um, is there sort of some up, upside in the gas that you've drilled in the past, uh, as well as uh, what you have going on in the oil fields? Yeah, we do have some upside, but it's in existing wells that we've drilled. And uh, we had a project we were working with CRC, which is the largest independent producer or the largest producer in all of California. Uh, we started that project before prices cratered. Uh, we ended that agreement during those low price times after you know 2021. And so if we decided we want to start drilling up there again, we could go and renegotiate a contract with them. But right now we're, we're really focusing on our oil projects. Uh, personally, I like them better because they're longer life reserves. Uh, they kind of like an annuity you know they'll just keep paying long you know through our lifetime and probably into our grandkids lifetime you know so they're uh, some of these fields have uh, produced for 70 years still have wells making 20 30 barrels a day in fact one of them's making 50 barrels a day in the sanzanina field that, that was drilled in 1952. so you wow. know they're <laughs> fantastic wells long life preserves where the gas you get real high rates but they, you know, don't have the life, you know, they might be a five year life. So you get good returns, but you don't get the big return on investments. You know, you get mm -hmm. great rate of returns, but not the return on investments. 
Uh, so we stopped that when gas prices got below two dollars, which now we all know it's eight dollars plus, and so it is tempting to get back up there. Um, we just right now we 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 want to focus on our three oil fields because we really like them a lot, and we mm -hmm. like the like say the return on investments to us is makes them far superior to the the gas fields, even though the gas field re returns would be fantastic right now. We've got mm -hmm. our you know, like I said we. We can keep adding to what we do, but we really need to focus on what we have. And so adding this third oil field is a great opportunity for us. And uh, and it's fantastic that we're, you know, because of the relationships we had with this company, getting in on the ground floor when uh, when right now ever, anybody else that they would let into that pro project would be highly, highly promoted. They do throw off some associated gas, though, that we're selling yes. over $10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <clears throat> add, added value to the oil there. Yeah, yeah. for example, the uh, horizontal well that uh, they just drilled that will be offsetting uh, in this new package, uh, 830 barrels a day IP of oil, but right now it's doing about also doing about 1.4 million a day in, in, in gas. So about $14,000 a day in, in revenue just from the natural gas. But it, it is a nice uh, piece on the side as well. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's, it ends up being about 25, 30% additional revenue to the oil rate. You know, so and the oil is the biggie. So they're they're making, you know, 100, in that particular well, they're making between 100 and $130,000 a day on that well. And uh, in terms of the, on the drilling projects, are you seeing uh, any sort of delays or, or problems getting uh, sort of getting the projects done on time and given sort of labor and shortages, supply chain issues, how does that affecting your business? It's it's affecting it because uh, what we have to do is we have longer lead times of planning. And so if we set up a drill time of, let's just say, uh, September, uh, right, you know, we set that because we it's taken us longer to get the pipe secured, you know, you got casing, the steel pipe that uh, you line your hole with, uh, tubulars that uh, go inside that steel casing. There's longer lead times for that, so that we're building those into our, our timetables. But even with that, uh, those, you know, we don't have any control over whether they slip or not. You know, everybody's trying to grab the rigs. You know, you could sit, look at the rig count. It's been a lot higher than it is now. So you, everybody wants to know why can't you just add more more rigs? The reason we can't is, you know, services, uh, the steel I'm talking about, and uh, labor. There's a labor shortage. People can't get good crews. You know, they can't. They're just. You don't want to throw any old crew together on these rigs because these are pretty complex wells you're drilling, you're constructing, and so you you just can't get the people right now. So it is slowing things down. And it is costing us more. But as Don said, we lock in the prices uh, for our investors. We turnkey our, our projects. So you, we end up locking them in three to eight months before we drill the well, and mm -hmm. which is good for the investor. And if we end up overrunning that, then uh, that's out of, that comes out of our pocket. It doesn't come, we don't ask the investor to come back and write another check uh, for drilling that well. If, uh, we, if it's a $12 million well, $13 million well, and it runs 20, 30 million, it cost you guys 12, eight, you know, we, it's uh, the investors locked in. That's what the turnkey means for us. Okay. Um, so it, it sounds like you've got a lot sort of uh, really to look forward to here. It sounds like um, kind of a, if these new projects go well, it's sort of a real uh, turning point for the company. Yeah, that it will help us a lot because it doesn't take a lot of volume to really turn your your cash flow around. And mm -hmm. our cash flow is positive now. It's been negative for quite a while, but our even with our taking participating at a low, much lower working interest, uh, those volumes are are making us cash flow positive now. You know, we're still backfilling, um, you know, some payables we've got. You know, in industry payables. But we're working through them and getting through them pretty quickly. And uh, one 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 good outcome changes everything. You can start. You can see a 50 barrel day well adds 
you know, hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month to your net income or more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're not looking at drilling 50 barrel day wells. We're looking at exceeding that quite a bit. But even at that, the returns are are very good. Um, as I always like to say, you know, when prices are low, you got to be really smart to and drill smart to do well and to make them economic wells. Well, right now, you don't have to be that smart to do, do that, even though we do try to be every, smart in everything we do. You see a lot of people doing things you're like, oh, my gosh, I would never do that. But it works out for them because price of oil is so high. Mm -hmm. it, it heals a lot of mistakes people make. Mm -hmm. Other benefit to the individual investor is that the uh, uh, drilling investment is 100% tax deductible. So you can write that off against ordinary income, capital gains, any kind of taxable event is directly offset by the amount that you put in. So if you're in a 20 or 30% tax bracket, you could end up getting, you know, 30% uh, or more because it uh, applies to state tax also. So if you're in a five or 10% uh, state tax, then you could end up with 40 or 50% of your investment being made through your tax refund. So tremendous tax advantage. And yeah, plus, yeah. on your income, you also get that depletion allowance. Yeah. Which was 15% uh, of revenues? Yeah, 15% yeah, of your earnings is, is right. deductible. Okay. Yeah, I saw I saw your pitch, uh, uh, Don, uh, in San Diego maybe a couple months back. I, I know one of the things that stuck out was that you could, um, since it's an active uh, loss, essentially an active deduction, you could you could use it for say if you're taking money out of your IRA and putting it in your Roth, something yes. of that nature. You could kind of offset the uh, the income generated from that. So there's some interesting tax strategies that go along with the the, the sort of the private placement investments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so the states that have like California's very high state income tax, it can start approaching, you know, 45, 50 percent. Hmm. Um, what do you know? I, I, it seems like the, the San Sanena field is pretty, it's a pretty sizable field. How many, maybe across your portfolio, how many sort of drilling opportunities do you see? And are they largely uh, infill from kind of what, what's there currently? Yeah, there's a, there is a, all the wells that we're drilling out there are infill locations. It's one of the, maybe the only field in LA basin that wasn't infill drilled back in the, you know, say starting in the, the 70s, 80s, and 90s. They really, they drilled every well out there between like 1952 and 1960. They did drill a couple of wells in the, uh, like 71, 72, they were all very successful. And then they did uh, one infill well in 92 or 94 uh, that drilled between the two largest wells, uh, both of them cumed over 1.2 million barrels. And that well has made about a half a million barrels and still has about 100,000 barrels left in it. So, you know, they could, they had proved the concept but nobody had done it. And uh, the real challenge in the LA Basin is not subsurface. The, the reserves are there. The challenge is having the drilling locations at the surface to be able to do it. What makes San Zanina more of a unique field is that we have 10 drill sites that we can drill from. We've got, we went through about three years of uh, back and forth with the city, going through an EIR, going through getting a, basically a uh, permission or a permit to infill drill these wells. We got that permit in 2021, late 20, somewhere in there, and started drilling, infill drilling out there. We had drilled three wells in the, uh, or five wells in the um, unincorporated LA because you could drill those faster. But the city, we got through that process, and that's a blanket permit for all future wells. So getting a permit there is not a challenge for us at all. And even with the, you know, LA, what they're trying to do with the drilling there, that doesn't affect us because what we do is we use the old well bores and uh, we either pull out the surface casing, start over, but they, we call them redrills, but they're essentially drilling brand new wells through these surface holes. 
and because they they're through the same surface hole, they get the designation of a redrill, and so they're not considered a new well, even though they really are a new well. And so, but drilling a grassroots well, which means starting in a new spot, new hole, not through the same surface casing, uh, those are those are challenging in LA right now to get those approved. But we've got a blanket permit and. We've identified over 70 locations so far. For example, when we drilled, we started that, that's where we were at. We drilled our first well, it added about five more locations. So as you drill, you prove up more. But that's with what we see right now, is, you know, around 70 locations. Sort of how many uh, do, you, do you guys hope to, to drill per year? You know, we originally had hoped to drill about Six, what we found, we had some surface limitations on facilities. We've been spending a, a lot of money and uh, to get those upgraded, and we have done that now. So uh, I can see us drilling four to six wells a year there. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to out drill your facilities, and you got to make sure you don't go out there and drill a well and uh, then have to restrict the production because you can't handle it at the surface. You know, that's that's frustrating to all of us because then you're sitting there seeing a really good well just idling, essentially, instead of yeah. uh, really, you know, putting the pedal to the metal and let it produce and get your return on investment. So we were real cautious about getting in that situation. Mm -hmm. But as a company, you know, we can see us drilling, you know, six wells a year at, in uh, North Jameson and that four to six in Sanzanina and uh, we the the new, new play out in West Texas I think they will drill you know four to five wells in probably four wells in the next 12 months okay and that, that's with a kind of through a partner yes that's through that a partner okay and so you mentioned that you kind of had to drop your working interests over the past couple of years maybe too kind of squeezed by are you able to increase those now that that sort of fundamentals are, are a little better yes or? we're taking higher interest in in the wells when we drill you know we 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 participate at a higher rate but we're always we always participate at some mm -hmm. level because our money's right there in there with you guys uh side by side so we're taking risk along with you guys okay or and with maybe any investor that invest with us uh, maybe I should ask, how, how do you guys feel about the sort of the overall fundamentals of, of oil pricing and kind of where it's gone and where you, where you think it would might go? Yeah, right. everybody, that is a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, we Don, don't, did you want to say something first? Go ahead. They predict, you know, Johnny's done some uh, modeling, economic modeling, which, you know, we can make money at $26 a barrel. At $50 per barrel oil, we make fantastic money so we don't need these high prices i mean we we love them don't get me wrong but um i don't think they'll be there forever and uh, we don't need them to make a good rate of return but uh you know amy diamond just this morning said that he thinks we'll go to 150 to 175 dollar oil with this new uh import ban on russian oil in addition uh this morning the european union said that they will not ensure None of the companies in the European Union will insure any tankers coming out of Russia. So that's huge. That uh, is a ban on oil right there. So I think we'll go higher before we go lower. But, you know, who knows when or how, uh, you know, we'll enjoy it while we can, but we don't need it to make money. You know, on an after tax basis, these are great. But on a cash on cash, we can make money all the way down to $26 oil. Yeah, and I think Don's right, and I mean, I know Don's right on that, what we can handle and what what we'd like to see, to be honest with you. I'd like to see that oil price stabilized in the $70 to $80 range. That's a, That makes for a very healthy oil and gas industry. It also makes for a healthy economy for the country. It's good for the country. It's not good to have oil down in the $30 and $40 a barrel, and it's not sustainable there because uh, people always ask me, you know, when are we going to run out of oil? And I said, well, you know, we've already run out of $30 oil. You know, we ran out of $20. Now we ran out of $30. But uh, not sure we've run out of $40 yet. You know, I think we have, but uh, 
you know, we have a pandemic, a black swan event, and it drops way below that. But it takes something like that to do that. You know, world demand is just continue to grow. But until the pandemic, it just it grows year on year. You have countries that are industrializing and adding to the demand every year. And so um, it's not going anywhere. That demand's not going anywhere. All these, the hubris with the politicians, well, they can, uh, you know, try to affect supply, you know, but they really need to affect demand if they really want oil and gas to go away. And it's not going to go away. You know, it affects everything we do. There's not a transition to energy out there yet that has any kind of uh, scale that's scalable to do anything really impactful. I mean, we've spent trillions and trillions of dollars to do certain things. And right now that's fulfilling a very small percentage in the world, maybe four to six percent. And so you're going to always, I think you're going to need all the energy sources. I think you're going to need wind, you're going to need solar, you're going to need nuclear to fulfill this world demand that's going to continue to increase with population size in these countries industrializing, including China, including India. So I see pricing, you know, there could be some wild swings, but our world is a lot less complicated at 60 to $70 oil than it is at this price because the challenge is, you know, somebody says they're going to do something. Uh, the frack crew is going to show up next week and then they show up three weeks later. You know, it's just because they couldn't get a crew or somebody got COVID or, you know, there's just complications and that everybody's seeing the supply chain stuff. Our services are like that supply chain. We we have new challenges. Uh, pipe costs quadrupled since the beginning of the year. And so, you know, it's we've got to deal with that. But of course, the returns are way better because pipe cost compared to 100 plus dollar oil is insignificant. But it it's tough on us on the front end. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that was an excellent answer. Um, maybe we'll open it up, see if anyone else on the call has some questions for you guys. Do you want Don to kind of tell you kind of how it works with the direct working interest? I know we kind of danced around it, but is there any more, Don, you want to add to that so that they might have questions about? Well, our current project is uh, four wells, and uh, that'll be in three different fields. Two at, uh, at the uh, new horizontal play there in Midland, Odessa, and then one at the North Jameson Field, Central Texas, still Permian Basin, and then one uh, well there at Sansonina. And so that diversifies, you know, multiple wells across three different fields. And uh, so we structure it as a working interest form of ownership so that it takes full advantage of the tax deduction. It's a uh, Schedule C business deduction. So you can bring that from your Form C right around to the front page and it reduces your AGI, your adjusted gross income, by the amount that you invest. And so whatever federal tax bracket you're in, if it's 30%, you'll get 30,000 back on a $100,000 investment. Uh, if you're in a 10% state tax like California, uh, you'll get another 10,000 back. And so uh, the tax advantage uh, is very significant, but uh, we're not investing as a company for the tax write-off. We're doing it for the reserves and the uh, income, the cash flow. And that can be uh, quite, quite good at these prices. So we've got a private placement memorandum. Uh, it's for accredited investors. It's a Reg D uh, 506C, uh, which is a public, uh, we can make public offers on it, but you've got to verify you're accredited. And uh, so we've got the black gold that just opened about 30 days ago, kind of right there at that San Diego conference, actually. And uh, so we've got that available probably fund it through uh, July, June or July, and start operations sometime in late August, early September. Yeah, and one thing we, you know, I think is a real important point is instead of, say, you, you invest in one unit, which is we, we the unit's $100,000, um, instead of investing that in one well, we spread it out over three or four wells in all of our books just to minimize the risk because no matter how good we are, no matter how good the wells are we offset, we're dealing with mother nature. You never know what happens. And so we're 
what could happen. So therefore, we want to minimize everybody's risk. And by spreading it over three or four wells, uh, odds of us head drilling three or four bad wells is very, 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 very low. And you drill one one really good well and th two okay wells and one bad well, it's an excellent program for everybody. You know, one good well can make everything. So we like to spread those risks over several wells. And this program was started by Don's dad, Harry Osmer. What's his quote that he always liked to say? One well is a gamble, two wells is speculation, three or more is an investment. And then uh, having it in different fields, I think, is good too. In case one play doesn't develop like you anticipated, uh, you've got another play in there. And in this case, three different oil plays. But uh, we've drilled now eight wells at Sansonina, uh, six wells at North Jameson, and we haven't had any dry holes. So we're, we've got a good record going so far there. Great, sounds like an excellent opportunity. Um, well, I'd just like to yeah, open it up again to anyone who has any uh, questions at this point. Everyone on the call should have been made a presenter, so they should be able to unmute if they need to. This is Scott. My apologies. I've had to go in and out as I fielded phone calls. Uh, I, what I'm just curious about is the future of, of the business. Are you going to be offering these types of opportunities on a regular basis for the next several quarters, two years? Yes. Yeah, this has been our business model for the last 35 years, since 1986. And one uh, beneficial policy that the company has is we'll, we'll always open our wells for uh, investors to participate. In other words, we won't cherry pick. Uh, we won't, you know, drill a good well and then do all the offsets and uh, exclude the investors. You've always got a right to participate. And the... Yeah, we uh, the current projects are on established leaseholds. Have you got more leaseholds beyond these? Yes. Well, I mean, we got more leasehold in these fields is where we are right now. So we don't have any, we have some leaseholds in some other areas, but these are the ones we're developing. Okay. But there's, there's a lot of drilling opportunities. We call them proved undeveloped locations, which are immediate offsets of economic producers. And we've got uh, enough to last us four or five years. And we we put out probably three books a year, three to four books a year, which are you know and, you know groups of three or four wells. So so you've got an operation that's almost always in a fundraising mode. So there's always something for your yep. investors to do. And is right. there any relationship at all between? A direct relationship between these investments and the public entity? Yes, I mean, our public entity invests directly alongside the investors. Uh, this mark, you know, Don runs our marketing group, and that is his, you know, purview is to to raise money to stretch our capital. You know, we can, um, capital's been very scarce up until now, and it's even not that easy to obtain capital now because of the current administration uh, still restricting capital from fossil fuel industry. So um, that's the, having this capital is important to us to be able to drill the number of wells we want to drill. Otherwise, we would just drill one or two wells a year if we were just using 100% of our capital, maybe three or four wells. So again, I apologize if you covered it. Is there any is there any ba uh, reason for us to be considering an investment in the public entity? Uh, at this time, I, well, I think it, we're not quite ready because we're kind of at a, what I call, we're, we're approaching the corner to turn the corner as a company. I think we're about there. And uh, once things start really ginning for the company, I would like to, you know, show you the growth, show you the growth path. And, uh, but also have wanted to prove that we've done it. You know, we've, you know, right now we're in that proving stage. And I, uh, once we turn that corner, I definitely would want to come out and uh, with a private placement of some sort to uh, allow people to invest in the company like that. But at this time, it's traded, you know, over the counter. 
So it is yeah. open for investment. Understood. Uh, and again, apologies in and out. Um, the the operation of the wells, you've got local operators or uh, does your business directly operate the wells? We do both. And uh, we, for example, Matrix was the operator of Sands and Ena. We, you know, spent my money, my lifeblood to buy that field. And uh, then we did an equity deal and the equity company had took our operating a lot of our our people to operate it it's still my people where i'm on the board of that company and uh, they operate that field now so we don't have operational control but we have operational input we're very close to them we still own 20 percent of it you know so we're we're very much involved in the operations but we're not the direct operator of it and it's kind of the same way with the texas field um we own a piece of the operator, so we're very much involved with the operator, but we don't control that operator. When I say we have a lot of influence, I mean, when they are technically designing any well, we have direct input. Uh, we have a, a very high level of technical expertise in our company and uh, lots and lots of years with engineers geologists geophysicists that are with the company and that uh, um, they seek our input and then we're we're out there when we're drilling the wells we're we're actively participating but i don't as the ceo of royal get to make the ultimate call but i have a lot of input into that call understood Well, it sounds like I think we've addressed everyone's uh, questions. It's a very thorough uh, presentation. Uh, thank you so much for kind of giving us the overview of the company and the investment opportunities in front of us. And we'll, we will point out we are amending that book uh, that we sent you, Ashley, and uh, we'll have that done here in a matter of two or three weeks. And we'll send you the new uh, copy of that book. And so there's already people investing in that book and and uh, but we saw an opportunity to upgrade it. And so we we're going to go ahead and do it instead of waiting until the next book. Uh, we we were too excited about getting into this uh, horizontal play that uh, we wanted to bring it in to this current book. Mm -hmm. OK, great. And that that closes maybe sometime by the end of this month. Sound about right or? No, July. 60 days to fund it, so probably by the end of July, and then our target operations will begin in uh, late August. Uh, and any sense of when the sort of the wells would be completed, or how long is the, the project duration? It it takes uh, a little time now. We're you know from spud to drill, it it may take uh, for horizontal wells say. 25 days and then you're 30 days later you start the fracking operation which these fracking operations are massive and uh, they they take anywhere 15 21 days just to get the well you know completed and then you start your flow back so it from start to finish uh, getting your flow back started is probably three months three and a half mm -hmm. months and you know they clean up and sometimes they start cutting oil uh, right away you know you got to produce back the water you injected into the ground and sometimes they start cutting oil right away sometimes it's a week or later sometimes it's a few weeks later that they start cutting oil and say it starts at one percent and just every day after it starts cutting oil you'll see that percentage increase and uh, the first well the sweet melissa start cutting oil very quickly i think in about a week and got to a pretty high percentage within three weeks. Okay. And for right. North Jameson and Sanzanina, it's a little quicker than that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, great. Well, thanks uh, so much for your time today. I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll kind of follow up offline and uh, look for the updated offering. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, just we'll touch base here soon. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bye. guys. Bye now. Some or all the speakers may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. The views in this podcast expressed are those of the speakers, not break investors. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. Neither break investors nor any of its affiliates makes any representation or warranty expressed or implied as to the accuracy or completeness of the statements or any information presented by this podcast and any liability, including in respect of direct, indirect, or consequential loss or damage, therefore is expressly disclaimed. No one on this podcast is an investment advisor. No one is providing investment advice. Before investing in any company's stock, you must do your own research. Thank you for listening.